Hi, I'm Ryan Moody, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. Having the right sinker size is something that many anglers struggle with. Too big, and your fish could feel the weight, and too small, you may not reach the target zone. But with tides changing each time you go out, how do you know what sinker size to use? That is the topic of today's blog. Now everyone says to use the minimum sinker to reach the bottom, but how can you tell? How do you know when you've got your right size sinker for the job at hand? There are a few factors to take into consideration. Tidal run is the big one, but the other factors include your line and leader diameter, the size of the bait you're using, and of course the depth of water. So let's get into it. So for this example, I'm using two identical outfits. They've both got the same line size and the same leader diameter, and I'm using the same size bait. And in this case, I'm using just a whole pilchard for this demonstration. So first up, we've got no run at the moment. We're at the top of the tide. So what I've done is I've put a very small sinker on. We're in 10 meters of water. And this is just gonna be enough for that bait to sit down on the bottom. Now the reason why I'm using the very small weight it's not just because there's no run. If I was to use a big weight on there, any species that likes to feed around the changes of the tide when there's no tidal movement, if they pick this bait up and there's a heavy sinker on there, they can feel the weight and they'll feel the hook stick into them and they'll spit the bait out. So around these changes, use the lightest weight possible. So what I'm gonna do is drop it down. You don't wanna cast it for miles. You wanna always fish fairly close to your boat. Now how do I know that this very light sink is on the bottom? Well even in this amount of run, which is bugger all, it will still keep running down, just slowly though. And the line will stop coming off the reel and then you'll see a belly in your line when it stops and hits the bottom. There we go, that has stopped running out now, totally. So I engage the reel, and I put it in the rod holder. Now, that angle is just going down perfectly to meet the sinker on the bottom. It's not rising up, but what's gonna happen is, when this tide picks up shortly and starts running out this way, that small sinker with that whole pilchard bait on there, the belly in the line is gonna make it lift off the bottom. When the current touches that line, it's gonna lift. That's when you have to go up in your sinker size. And that's why it pays to have a variety of different weights. Uh, sooner or later in the estuaries and that, you'll learn you'll, you'll need one, two, threes and fours generally, uh, whether it's ball or bean sinkers. Uh, ball sinkers and bean sinkers are best on running rigs. And of course you use the dropper leads for your dropper rigs. And also you can use ball sinkers and bean sinkers on the bottom of droppers too. You just simply slide it up and tie a knot underneath it. So at the moment you can see that that line is not lifting. It is perfect sitting down there on the bottom. Now the tidal movement has just started to run out. And as you can see, I'll just try again with this light sinker. Now I can tell straight away that it's going to run out because the line's already disappearing out the back there. It's coming off the reel a bit quicker. As you can see, we're starting to get a big belly in the line right out the back here. Okay, it's just touch bottom. So I'm gonna lock that off there and just watch what happens. So what's gonna happen now is the current is gonna to touch the line and the leader and it's gonna create a, that belly in the line and it's gonna lift your bait back off the bottom. And that's what's happening here now, I can tell because it's just wanting to run back further. Now if I let this line back out again, Yep, it still wants to go. So it's risen, it's dropped off the bottom, basically. It's come up off the bottom. Now, I'm gonna try the same thing. Identical outfits, same size baits, except I've got a sinker that's twice as big on here. I've got number four on there now, so I'm just gonna drop him over the side like I did the other. Now, although he's running out the back a little bit, the angle is steeper. In other words, he's sinking down quicker and he's gonna end up on the bottom and hopefully not rise to the surface.
There we go, she's on the bottom there now. Now, we'll just wait one second and just see if it rises or not. But can you can see the difference between the two. The one with the light sinker is up on the surface with the belly in the line because the current's touching it. And the one with the heavier sinker is down nicely, still on the bottom, and it hasn't wanted to rise. So at the moment, for this amount of run, size four ball sinker is the one that's working. Now, if it picks up further again, even faster, that one will start to rise. And that's when I'm gonna have to go up to a larger sinker once again. So it takes a little while to get used to it, but remember, when you go out fishing, go to the tackle shop, don't just grab one bag of sinkers, grab a variety of sinkers because you do want the least possible amount of weight to the fishing situation that you're in. So, in other words, you don't want a super heavy sinker in no run, and you don't want light sinkers when there's plenty of run. Now, we're about 15 minutes later into the tide, it's picked up even further, and now my number four has risen off the bottom. So I'm gonna wind it in now, and I'm gonna replace it with a bigger sinker again. So it's not all about sitting there and wondering what the hell's going on while you're not catching anything. It's probably because your baits are up off the bottom. So I'll wind this one in. And we will tie on a bigger lead again. This time I'm using a snapper lead, number eight, which is about twice the weight of that last sinker we had. Righto. Now let's try this one. Out to the side, straight down like I did the others. It's running off the reel much quicker. There we go, on the bottom. Once again, we've got that nice angle going down just in front of the spot. You never want to anchor too far away from your fishing spots. Just have them out the back of your boat a little bit and that's what you want to be able to do. You want to be able to drop your baits over the side without casting them for miles so that they run back on that angle so that it stays on that angle once it hits the bottom. If it rises up too high, then you know you've got to change your sinker. So as you can see here now, the light sinker, he's up flapping on the surface in this amount of run, and the bigger one we put on just a minute ago is still down nicely on the bottom without being too heavy. So there's other things to take into account. If you're using heavier line, one rod might be 20 pound, you might be using 40 or 50 pound line on another rod. So that's going to have a different effect again. That's going to give you more belly and the opportunity for your baits to rise off the bottom again, the heavier the line. Other considerations is the bait, the size of the bait. That's going to that's going to um, help the drag even more if you go up in your bait size. Another thing you need to take into account. And also, if you go to deeper water, same thing could happen. You'll have to bump up your sinker size once again for that same amount of run that you're experiencing. For example, in uh, 400 metres, this is the kind of sinker that we're actually using. And that's a day with no run. You can see it here on the sounder as it runs straight down under the boat to the bottom. So in summary, your sinker size is just not something that you set and forget. You have to change it with the conditions. So if you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you only want some special tips we'll send out by email only, head on over to our website, ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and we'll see you next time.